Welcome to Sri and Kira Live. As our world spins seemingly out of control, we are all experiencing time speeding up, chaos shifting to a new level, and a yearning to know the greater mysteries of the universe. What does it all mean? Visionary spiritual teachers and best-selling authors Sri Ram Ka and Kira Ra explore these mysteries, offer live soul readings, and invite you to open up your mind, body, and spirit to the paradigms that are shifting. Bringing you fresh perspectives and timeless wisdom, here are Sri and Kira. Uh, namaste and welcome, everybody. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And I am Kira Ra, and clarity is calling. I hope you answer the phone, or, or I hope you answer the, <laughs> the tweet, or the text, or whatever method clarity is calling you, because that is today's focus. And you know, Shree, really, I can't think of a better time to be talking about clarity than right now. You know, I think when clarity calls, it uses a silent ringtone. <laughs> Or a buzzer or, or vibrate, but we won't go there either. Well, yeah, sometimes there is a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're looking forward to exploring clarity and how to reside in your own divine clarity at every moment of every day. And we're looking forward to receiving your calls and chatting with you today. You know, one of the, th of the things that's important to recognize is that clarity is not a solution to a problem. Clarity is a way of being that allows us to navigate so-called progress. Well, it's a progress. proactive energy. You know, in order to have clarity, you have to be proactive. Because, I mean, imagine, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this, and it's like, what if every moment, I mean, every moment, every breath, every decision was filled with clarity? You know, what would your life look like? How would your life shift? And, and how would you even function? You know, I think for so many people, it's a question of, you know, oh my gosh, I can't get clear, I can't get clear. Well, maybe you need to consider what if? What if you are clear, then what? Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's uh, uh, really the question is, what am I not willing to look at? Because when we have uh, a lack of clarity in our life, it's usually because there's some conflicting emotional energy or other content within our subconscious mind that's kind of uh, pulling us in one direction, whereas maybe our spirit is heading in another direction. It's as if we're being pulled two directions, so OMG, don't look. Right, and you know what's amazing is that when it comes right down to it, there are actually, believe it or not, guys, it is as easy as one, two, three. I know that sounds kind of coined, but the reality is it is, and during the show today, we're going to be offering you three simple targeted steps that will honestly assist you to gain extraordinary clarity. And you know, Shri, when we talk about clarity, I, I want to begin by talking about the ultimate D word. Which one is that? Oh, there's so many D words, right? <laughs> <laughs> this one is doubt, D-O-U-B-T, doubt, because, you know, Zodkill, Archangel Zodkill, all you know, our precious, precious, amazing guy, one of the things Archangel Zodkill always says so beautifully is that only doubt can separate you. Only doubt can take you from your truth. And believe it or not, guys, we're not even at the steps yet, but the reality is you have to look at the doubt. Well, doubt is that energy that causes you to wobble. You know, doubt is the energy that, that really comes in and says, I'm not sure about me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> me, me, me. Well, it, it's true. <laughs> it is true. Uh, there is, uh, you know, a, a paradox at work. If you look at the, uh, you know, innocence is, is blind kind of thing, there is a congruence or an authenticity when we're naive, when we're truly innocent. And then when the brain wakes up and we start getting all this information and we're gathering all kinds of conflicting viewpoints and perspectives that we allow those perspectives to have weight yeah and yeah, that's true. and they start pulling at us uh, versus listening and ever refining our inner guidance our inner well, knowing and that's why we're here today and you know one of the gifts of this show is that along with being able to connect with you each week and live and and share about these amazing topics we also get the gift of connecting with you now we have quite a stack of people who wrote us last week to guest at shriankararadio.com remember you can always write us there again that's guest at shriankararadio.com or give us a call. And remember, you can call toll-free at 888-627-6008. Again, that's 888-627-6008. However, Shri, I want to begin today with some of these. I want to I really offer clarity <laughs> to some of these people that are coming in 
from the web, from the sure, guest sure. Care radio. Yeah, the emails. Yeah, so why don't we begin with one, and I love the subject line. It says, a question from Monta- Montana with a smiley face. I love that. Well, it's about time Montana started asking. Well, I like the smiley <laughs> face. <laughs> All right, this one reads, I've been listening to your radio show each week since it began, and it's wonderful uh, to hear about the uh, remarkable women who were on the show, she says last week, that was a couple of weeks ago. Oh, when we had that amazing group of our incredible our, our healers. Soul Ascension Intuitive Healers. Yeah. yeah, go see them. They are amazing people. And uh, at any rate, she continues on and says, Lately, I have been wanting to ask for guidance about my job or career path. I know I'm drawn to working with children, and I have had the honor of being with so many amazing little beings. Aww. However, I also get into jobs that bring in lower energies mm. or don't feel fulfilling mm-hmm. for very long. I'm wondering if you would be able to share any guidance regarding my work or practice that might be in the highest. Well, namaste, beautiful Farron. And I, I love the way she signed it. She said, sending love from the mountains of Montana. And we're sending love right back to you to the mm-hmm. mountains from Guatemala. Plus, I see here, Farron, you're going to be joining us in November. And I'm really excited that you've joined us for the personal evolution journey. And I will share with all of you listening that we still have a few openings for that November personal evolution journey. But boy, these things are selling out fast. Well, there's certainly uh, powerful programs that tend to realign lives. It's such a blessing, although remember, we limit them very, very small because we hold them here in our self-ascension sanctuary. So, Farron, I'm so glad you're coming in November. That's actually a really big piece of this for you. And the other thing I want to share is that as Sri was reading your email, I started, it was as if, and if it's safe for you, honey, close your eyes and feel yourself, take your hands and imagine, and it's so funny, they're saying, imagine you're in a tube of foam. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm sorry, that's the, what they're giving me. And they're saying, it's like your hands are pushing out the foam. And when you push the foam out in front of you, you're able to breathe better. And when you push it in other places, you notice that in some places the foam pushes and in some places the foam does not. And what that's meaning is that you are um, testing. And that's what they're saying. You're going to find that as you test this, the foam moves. And and almost like I see your hand going through it and it feels easy and soft. And then you're going to test something else and it doesn't. And they're saying that your life right now is an experiment. And they're using that word very, very carefully. I was getting ready to give another word when they gave me the word experiment. And so your life right now is an experiment. And so they're saying to allow every experience that is coming forward to be part of your own experience of the experiment and that through this experiential experimentation time you will um, get very very solid in other words they're showing me the foam becoming a crystal and you move from being in this foamy world into this crystalline world where, and of course, how perfect that we're, we're addressing this question today, everything is clear. Crystal everything clear. Everything is crystal clear. And so, my love, have fun with the experiment. Be in the foam, and your crystal is forming. <laughs> Namaste. And see you in November, Angel. Well, that's, that's beautiful imagery. You know, uh, the idea of being in foam uh, reminds me that everything is fluid. And that we are indeed shaping our realities, Uh we're shaping ourselves. Yes. And that that ability to accept transformation is is critical. You know, there's a piece of us that contributes to the doubt, that contributes to uh, resistance, and that piece of us is our ego. Indeed. And that ego self, that identity uh, with the smaller self, creates a host of problems for anyone on a path of self-ascension. It doesn't create problems if you want to be just operating within density because density applauds egos. <laughs> you know, de- density, density loves uh, charismatic and opinionated people. Well, density and, loves and, doubt. It's a double D. It is. Den- <laughs> density, density and doubt go hand in hand. They do. And, and yet the ego is one of these paradoxical spiritual challenges. In every way. It's, it's your friend. 
the ego is truly your inner child that is there to delight in density, to play in density, Aww. and to help keep you safe. You know, to know, uh, you know, when the sign says uh, the stoplight is red, you really should stop. You okay. know, and take a look. <laughs> and, and so, Unless you live in Guatemala. <laughs> and, so, and so the the ego learns the rules, but it also holds the grudges and it holds the pains. And this is why so often, as as our life ripens and we begin a more conscious a spiritual journey, we have conflicts because our egoic self is in the habit of having driven the car, you know, being in charge. Well, and our egoic self, you know, it kind of brings us to step one. And I think maybe we'll, we'll get to step one and, and really claiming clarity. And I encourage you guys, we're going to be offering you these three steps through the entire show today. So you've got to be with us through the whole show and you might want to write these down. But it really brings us to step one, Shri, because in density, the ego loves our wounds. You know, yes. it, it uses our wounds. It, it uses our wounds to drive us. We make decisions from those wounds. How many times have you had something extraordinary in front of you, something fresh, something new, something that you really want to do, yet an old wound or an attachment to an old wound stopped you from doing it or created a doubt that derailed you? Or, or your, all these your, D's. Yeah. Or Derailing your, doubt. <laughs> Indensity. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist You're that. carried away. I am, I am, I know. <laughs> and, and, you know, the ego is the same vehicle that will uh, assist you to self-sabotage when everything is lined up joyfully, the great partner, the great job, whatever it is, and somehow you sabotage it. That's the ego also. Always. Because pain is it, its structure. It remembers all the pains in your life and it seeks to avoid more disappointment. Yes, in and, every way. And, and so the ego indeed is a precious companion on the journey of evolution. Well, and you know, Sri, a lot of people would say, okay, as I'm moving forward for my clarity, as I'm moving forward to do other things, uh, you know, clarity for me is also about abundance because if I, if I, if only I, right? How many times do you ever hear the if only I or when I? Well, when I do this, then I'll have this. Or if only I had this, then I would do this. And so we want to talk about step one right now. And step one is this all wounds. Now, I, I want you guys to hear this all wounds, all, A L L, total, all wounds are healed through love. So I want you to really take that in because we are not talking about uh, marital love or family love. We're talking about the fact that it begins with loving yourself enough that you can accept, and this is the biggie, this is the key, you can accept that all doubt energy can be healed because doubt is an energy. You know, and, and consider for a moment the very nature of love. That, Ooh, uh, I'd love to. <laughs> uh, ascended love is more than just this active passion. It is a peaceful acceptance. Yes. And that's a fundamental quality of unconditional love is a non-resistance, an acceptance. And so certainly with all wounds being healed through love, it begins through that energy of yes. acceptance. And accepting that doubt can be released. That doubt is just an energy. You know, doubt is of density. It really is a double D. It's, it's just of density. And so it begins with loving yourself enough. And so self-love gives us self-acceptance, which helps us accept and release doubt. And, and there are some things we can do. Absolutely, because all of us love ourselves to more more or less uh, of a degree, or we wouldn't be alive. It takes the energy right. of that sense of self-love, self-respect, and a willingness to trust the divine that gave us birth yes. and, and to keep going. Yeah. And yet the doubt comes in and it kind of uh, makes it puts speed bumps on the path. Right. So it's important to start aligning with the gift of self-love. That It begins with recognizing that our whole life is a gift. And an exercise that you can do is to bring your hand to your heart. Take a deep breath in and declare, oh. in this moment, I trust myself. Boy, is that simple. Yet you have to believe it. You have to accept it. And it takes a breath. It takes a, a little repetition to let the intention, uh, the vibration of that declaration to really filter in. In this moment, I trust myself. I love that. And that's step number one, that in order to gain your clarity, you really need to remember step number one, 
all wounds, all wounds are healed through love, and it's the self-love and the acceptance that doubt is easily released. And how do we do that? We bring our hand to our heart. We take that beautiful breath and declare, in this moment, I trust myself. And you know what, Tree? In this moment, I see that we're stacking up some first-time callers. So why don't we say hello to some of these beautiful beings? Absolutely. Let's go to line one and say hi to Mikey from Colorado. Well, hey, Mikey. Namaste, beloved. Hello, beloved teachers. Hello. Um, Welcome. We're so glad to hear you. <laughs> oh, it's so good to talk to you. The main thing I was wondering about is if you could see anything in my future for the healing center I want to operate. <laughs> okay. Well, what I'm going to ask you to first of all do is they're saying that for you to allow yourself the gift of right now relaxing your hands in whatever way you can, just relax them. And they're saying that as you relax your hands, relax the vibrational, it's interesting, the words they're giving me, Mikey, are relax the vibrational self within that at times radiates with um, an energy of anticipation. So it's just like be really, really Ah, oh, you know, just kind of like that, that really sinking into deep relaxation. And as you do that, and as you relax your hands, they're saying that the center of your divine soul is the seat of the wisdom and the healing energy of the heart. And that when you bring it from this space of quietude and you illuminate it through your hands, that the radiant energy becomes an attractor field that will open this. Um, they're calling it a, a almost like a um, they're calling it a center of illumination, that this center of illumination will open in ways that the mind has yet to conceive and that to just keep walking forward from this space of quietude and divine knowing and that this revelation will come forward to you in a way that will support you. And they're saying that this is a support that you have been looking to manifest and that is all around you. And it's about just putting those final puzzle pieces together. They're also telling me the number eight. Um, I'm thinking a lot's going to happen for you in August. Plus, it's like August is where a lot of things come together. The next eight months are also very, um, very much for you about anchoring and getting really quiet. Just just quiet, like this radiant, illuminated master who just smiles with quietude. And so it is, my love. Many blessings. Well, oh, thank you very much. Thank you, sweetheart. Namaste. Namaste. You know, Namaste. the idea of moving forward is always a one that kind of shakes our foundations. Well, it definitely. Because moving forward means moving into the unknown, even though yeah. it might be a vision, a desired Ooh, goal. Yeah. It's it's the unmanifest becoming manifest. And each and every one of us in our lives must move forward. And each and every one of us discovers both the thrill and the anxiety yeah. of the movement. Every Also, all the time. And, you know, one of the things that I think is really powerful is that along with that, you know, here we are today talking about releasing doubt and embracing our clarity. I mean, really living in that crystal and clarity and offering these three very tangible steps. And the key is that in order to move forward in any way, we have to claim clarity. Because without clarity, the message we send to the universe is, send me lots of confusion. Send me lots of smoky guidance. You know, send me lots of, of too many decisions to make. Because what happens when you have too many decisions in front of you? Well, then we, we oftentimes become immobilized. Exactly. You know, and, and then there's a, a different state of being. And, and usually this is a more youthful state where we think we have clarity, <laughs> where we have this, this this, this passionate, of yeah, we have this passionate moment, you know, <laughs> exactly. there, where we have the singular focus that yeah. is kind of like I want that ice cream cone, but it could but be you know you want that ice cream cone, <laughs> <laughs> but it could be I want that uh, career or I yeah, want that girlfriend true. boyfriend or I want you know this job yeah. or that house and that kind of passionate clarity or emotional clarity 
actually our teaching moments because mm, in every way what we learn is we become kind of a ping pong ball if if we're only listening to the emotional body right. and the momentary you know desire energy well or if we're listening to too much at the same time you know we do that too sometimes in our search for clarity we actually cloud ourselves because we don't trust that we've received an answer so we'll read another book we'll ask another friend we'll ask another person we'll talk to our coworkers we'll go explore something else and when in reality what we've done is we've been given the answer yet we dismiss it well and that boy that's that's a whole uh that process a well yeah. <laughs> no it's, it's important to touch touch with some clarity on that right now is it's normal to want to investigate it's normal to want to seek uh, indeed, uh, wisdom indeed, you know yeah. through authorities and books and that kind of thing and yet, what's really happening when we're looking at these books and and uh, and these other wisdom sources is we're trying to find a reflection of our own inner wisdom. Mm -hmm. We're we're using the outer world to find something that resonates. Yeah. And for a while, we believe ourselves. Uh, we believe that it's that thing outside of ourselves that's actually doing it. Right. But it's the way we lean into it. It's uh -huh. the, the fact of the matter is it's igniting something within us that's true and valuable. And if we learn to listen to that something within us, that X factor inside, then we're at the source of our clarity. Yeah. We're at the source of our authenticity. Well, you know, before we get to step number two, Shri, why don't we go back to our phone lines? Because I see we have a few more uh, first-time callers who are still waiting to, to chat with us and had lots of email from people who couldn't get through last week. So let's go ahead and get some clarity here by inviting Jerry, who is another first-time caller, to the show. Namaste, Jerry. Hi, Sri and Kira. Good to hear you. Um, Good to hear you. I have a huge day tomorrow, probably all week, and I'm um, just wondering if there's something you can share with me around it. Whew. Well, the first thing I can share with you is to breathe. You know, it's really funny. What they're saying with me is that there, there should actually be a sense of excitement inside of you. And that excitement, you know, can carry with it both a positive and a not so positive experience. But they're saying for you, illuminate your energy into a moment of excitement and freedom. And that through it, through this, there is the opportunity to... Um, the word they're giving me is exhale. It's like you're holding, holding, holding. And they're saying it's time for you to exhale. And so I, it's funny. They're showing me your belly, and it's like you bring it in really, really tight, and then whoo, exhale. And they're saying that through this entire week for you, it is – it's funny. They just keep using all of these um, – things about respiration, that it's an inhale, but it's a large exhale. And with each exhale, feel the excitement that you're in connection with yourself again. Feel the connection of your emotions, feel the connection of your heart, feel the connection of your truth. And they say the more that you relax and exhale, the farther you will fly and the farther you will go. And to uh, they're saying, fear not, be not afraid, for the time of your clarity is at hand. And in this clarity, miracles will come forward in a way and abundance that you have yet to prepare for. And so exhale, 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 and be excited. They're saying, fear not, be excited. And so it is, my angel. I'm glad you called in. Oh, namaste. Thank you. Thank you, angel. Namaste. Oh, you know, be excited reminds me also to have a positive expectation because truly everything is unfolding and even the doubt is uh, like a uh, a doorbell to your clarity. <laughs> I love that. The, the doubt, yeah. You can, Only it's not Avon calling. <laughs> well, but it's an, I, I got another D word okay. for you. Of course you do. The doubt is the doorbell. Be, because when the doubt comes up, how do we feel? The doorbell doubt. I oh, yeah, that. you know, you know we true. don't feel good. Doubt, yeah, no, 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 doubt, that's true. doubt is, is not a real pleasant state of being. And so if we think of it as a doorbell rather than a definition. Ooh, oh, is he rattling them off or what, guys, yeah. huh? It's not defining ourselves. It's actually a little ringtone saying, hey, 
remember your clarity awaits oh, you. Yeah. You don't have to hang out in doubt. You you wow. can hang out here if you're enjoying the discomfort. Oh, oh stop. Oh, just <laughs> stop. Oh, did you see him digging for D words? Oh, did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I want to I want to come back to one thing that we touched on earlier. And that is the dismissible voice. Another D. Uh, well, it's there. <laughs> it is you know, there. You know, the voice of the soul mm. does not scream at us. No. It does not shout at That's us. That's true. And oftentimes the volume level of the outer world, the overstimulation of modern life, the chatter that's going mm. on in our brains, all of those things, Ooh. you know, they're, they're, they're demanding your attention. Yes. And the voice of the soul is dismissible. You can kind of just move on and it'll say, oh, okay, well, I'll see, wait for you. This takes us right back to step one as we're, as we're moving into step two. Because remember, beloved ones, in step one, it was that acceptance that the doubt energy can be healed, that all wounds are healed through love. And often we confuse ourselves because the dismissible voice has already given us an answer. And it's usually one of two things. It's either an answer we really don't want, right? We, we already, a lot of times we just want to find somebody to agree with a solution that is the solution we prefer. Well, it's an answer our ego didn't want to hear. Exactly, because <laughs> the ego loves density. And so this brings us to step number two. You ready, guys? All right, here it is. Step number two. We are getting clear and we are releasing our doubt. Bring your hand to your heart again, but this time you want to ask and you ask with clear with clarity. Beloved spirit, beloved universe, show me now where I am holding the wound of self-judgment. Because remember, step number one is about loving yourself enough to accept that you can heal the doubt. However, step number two is going to offer you the gift of really discovering where you're holding it. You know, and the remember, everything is energy. So as one hand is on your heart and you're aligning your consciousness through the command of show me, then you allow the other hand, the free hand, to just float over the body, to just float around the body. And like a magnet, it will be drawn to the area of the body that is holding that energy of the, the doubt, the so wound of self-judgment. So Shreel, walk you through that right now. Just take a moment, okay? Kind of shake out your hands, blah, shake them out, take them out, take them out there, go move the shoulders. Relax, Ooh, take a breath. Take a breath, okay? And so we're gonna do step number one together. We're gonna bring our hand to our heart. We're gonna take in a nice deep breath. And on the exhale, in this moment, I trust myself. In this moment, I trust myself. Now feel that, keeping that hand on that heart, and now, beloved universe, show me where I am holding the wound of self-judgment. And allow the other hand to float over your physical body and let it be drawn to the area that's holding the wound. And once it's drawn to that area, allow it to rest on that area of the body. Now you have one hand on your heart, and one hand on the area that's needing love. And this creates a healing circuit, a circuit of energy, a link from your heart, which is indeed the source of divine love. So breathe deeply now and allow love and trust to flow through your hands. Up the hand that's on the heart, around the shoulder, and then out the hand that's on the other body part. Just breathing love and trust and accept the flow of love. You know, healing does not require that we relive pain. And that's why sometimes people think that healing is hard. It's not. Healing is simply bringing love and light to that which was ignored, which was Ooh, denied. Powerful. And so this healing circuit brings the love of your own divine heart to that area that's holding the, the wound of self-judgment. And with each breath, it begins to soften 
and mm. dissolve. I love this. You know, so those are the first two steps. And I would suspect you're already feeling like you're a little closer to clarity. And I noticed that we are super close to a break. And so when we come back from that break, we're going to talk about step number three. I see we still have some first time callers we're going to get to. And if you want to call and get into that queue, remember it's 888-627-6008. And if that line's busy, just keep calling back or you can always call direct at 530 530- 327-7602. And so, Shree, I'm excited because I've released all my doubt that we are sharing amazing information. I know that this information is impacting people that are listening right now. Well, let's all take a deep breath and relax and trust. And we're going to be right back after this commercial message. Namaste, beloved one. This is Kira Ra, and I am inviting you to take a journey of the soul in the land of the heart. Imagine your life free from chaos and filled with creative clarity. Imagine waking up each day in your private lakefront casita, greeted by brilliant sun, flowers, and birds. It is here that you will effortlessly resurrect your divine blueprint and pristine energy. Yes, I am inviting you to join us for a personal resurrection vacation retreat at beautiful Lake Adatman, Guatemala. Here, you can rejuvenate your life as you indulge in Tosa Spa cuisine, private healing sessions, yoga, tai chi, meditation, and loving support. Imagine enjoying pure air, zero noise pollution, and endless stars in this ascended nirvana. The time is now to claim your true joy. Learn more by visiting shriandkira.com and just click on the Resurrection Vacation Treat page. Tosa La Laguna, healing lives, healing hearts. We welcome you home. The path of self-ascension is a conscious decision that brings your life experience into alignment with soul consciousness. The rare gift of an active approach to living in the heart and manifesting the present moment. Sri Ramka and Kira Ra invite you to visit Self Ascension Magazine, a free online self ascension hub that lifts your spirits and frees your heart to soar. On the Self Ascension Magazine website, you can read Sri and Kira's perspectives on what's happening today. Discover a daily meditation and weekly practice. Watch special video and audio clips. Follow Kira Ra's messages from the Archangelic Realm and learn about upcoming events or courses. Relax and enjoy a visit to Self Ascension Magazine online at www.shriandkira.com. Explore, participate, and unfold this rare treat for yourself. Remember, that's shriandkira.com. Oh, welcome back, beloved ones. We're so glad you're with us. Uh, We are indeed delighted. And each and every week, we have the joy of sharing spiritual uh, truth and delight and joy and connecting with you via your calls and letters. And today, we're releasing our doubt because we are clear, Sri. We are so clear. And I just want to mention to all of you, you know, make sure you tune in with us next week and spread the word because next week is part one of a two-part series, very timely, very important. I think that's all I'll say right now. You can go to the websites to learn more about it. <laughs> well, there's there's more to come. And, you know, uh, we'd like to go back to the phone lines. Let's and, do that. Uh, let's say hello to Michelle from Phoenix. Who's a first-time caller. Namaste, Michelle. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for taking my phone call. Oh, we're excited. Um, <laughs> me too. Um, I am wondering if I should be there's any kind of message or anything that you can give me uh, for I'm someone that I feel like recently has taken, you know, 30 steps back, you know, and I've got that proverbial dark cloud and I just cannot get out of it, you know? Yeah. And I'm just, I'm, you know, looking for any, any kind of hope, any kind of something that can just get me started again. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, it's so cute. As you were sharing, behind you was, I I don't know, they're telling me 33. For whatever reason, the the number 33 and the number 6 are around you. And and these 33 adorable little beings, I mean like little cute beings, like some of them look like fairies and some of them look like little elvins and some of them look like angels and some of them look like crystalline beings, were all tickling you. 
and they were all just tickling you and they were and then they were lining up and pretending they were and they wanted to use the word a locomotive and they're saying you're on the track you're just not you're just not putting enough steam in the engine and that being on the track is uh, for you about finding the delight. And they're saying that it is no accident that you called in today. It is no accident you got on the show today when we're talking about clarity. And it's so cute, my love, because all around you they're saying, this is easy, this is not hard, this is easy, this is not hard, that there's an energy of density that entered you that somehow made you believe it's hard when it's not. And they're saying all you need to do is every day make do one thing just one thing that you're doing because it makes you smile and that you will find that those that that energy will start compounding and that these 33 helpers these 33 angels these 33 crystalline beings are there to guide you and they're saying put your hands out and may they touch joy and you will discover the truth once more and from here you will flourish and fly and the number 33 they're saying is 33 days that as you allow yourself to commit to this the next 33 days and they're saying today is day one and they're tickling you like crazy it's so cute some of them are like hanging on your ears and they're they're just it's just adorable it's like i see you romping around with these fun little fairies and they're saying that today is day one and and in 33 days as you follow your truth you will find the rainbow and and that's how they want me to share it with you my love so you're ready. You're on the track. You are the locomotive and you have enormous support. Allow yourself to just start every day doing this one thing. And I, I really see it un unfolding for you, honey. The six, by the way, is six months. They're saying 33 days, six months, that within six months, your life is very, very different. And you're very, very pleased uh, is the word they want me to give you with the outcome. And so it is. Many blessings, Angel. Thank you very much. Thank you, honey. Namaste. Well, I think I think we could all use a few fairy tickles from time to time. <laughs> I you love know, fairy it's, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I remember a time when uh, I felt that my life was not moving forward. I think we've uh, all had that you know, we oh, we goodness. you know, you could call it a slump. You can call it the, the dark night of the soul. And uh, or many other things. Or, you, know, you can call it hell if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but what? Uh, what I discovered, and uh, it took me more than one of these slumps to discover it, Usually is does. is that we are constantly birthing ourselves ever yes. anew. Yes. And when we go to another cycle, another chapter, another you know, you call it another station along mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. There's there's um, a continuum where you're actually birthing. And mm -hmm. if you think about the baby in the womb, all those months, and at some point the pregnant mother says, hey, I'm tired of this. Let's get on with it. And you know what I love <laughs> about that? After, you know, I remember, especially during my first pregnancy, as a, you're, you're afraid. And so what's wonderful about it is the fact that you're like, hey, let's get on with it is actually a way to get you out of the fear. Because as a pregnant mother, I know I went through this moment of, oh, my God, I'm going to have to deliver a baby. And, and you go through the fear of the pain or the fear of the unknown or the fear of whatever. And no matter how well prepared you are, it's there. And then you get to the point where no matter what is going to happen <laughs> and I'm so ready that the fear finds another way. And so that's a great analogy because when we get to the point where we say enough, no matter how much we've had holding us back, we have to let it go because the energy of momentum is so abundant. It's right there in front of you. And momentum is happening. And sometimes when we think we're in a slump, what we're actually doing is building the force necessary yeah, so. to take the next leap. May the force be with you, the Shri. Force, the force is and strong in your you, family. Well, the force is very strong. And, you know, speaking of strong force, <laughs> remember that you can always join us on our show live if you want to give us a buzz in you're always welcome to give us a call and remember that it's easy to do that phone number as always is 888-627-6008 and Shree before we would go back to the lines remember that you can also call uh, call us you can also write us at guest at shreeandkiraradio.com I want to read a beautiful letter that came in just a few days ago from Joy and here's what Joy said subject line was last week's mini soul reading dear Shree and Kira 
I was lying on my bed in a state of stunned amazement as you read out my email last week and gave me a beautiful mini soul reading. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It has triggered a massive wobble on all levels and was obviously incredibly powerful for me. I have been stuck in the fourth dimensional astral plug for 26 years now and I'm truly hoping my breakthrough is not too far away because I truly wish to serve in the world and at present am confined to my bedroom. Do you see me breaking through soon? Much love and crystalline blessings. Joy. Oh, Joy, thank you so much for writing and sharing and thank you for listening. First and foremost, the fact that you are listening, the fact that you are writing, the fact that you are available to the question is all confirmation or I should say reassurance that you are indeed ready to, to use your words, break through. The key is what is it that you see the breakthrough offering you? They just keep saying, get clear. You know, I just love and That's why I had to offer this email today because all these angels around you keep saying, well, get clear, get clear, get clear. What is it you want to do? What is it that's outside to use just, the, you know, these words that is calling you and then focus on it and claim it? You know, Joy, one of the other things I want to offer to you is uh, what we were just talking about, that, that sometimes the birthing period is longer than we think it should be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that there's more going on. There's a resolution of all kinds of energies, past life energies, energies of, uh, you might even call it penance yeah. or uh, uh, rebalancing the scales. And as Kira was sharing with you and as I was tuning in, mm -hmm. for me, I, I'm seeing that you're very close. Yeah. Very, very close. Actually, I get that you've been there. It's just a question of taking the action through clarity. Taking that step, taking the leap, and, uh, and uh, having a little mercy on yourself also. And just recognizing all in good time, I'm ready to step forward, I'm ready to step out. And now, as you learn the rest of this clarity exercise that we're going to be sharing, do that exercise. And you'll find it'll flow naturally for you. You know, absolutely. And I want to share with all of you out there, it's important to offer yourself good, strong, foundational wisdom. And sometimes, you know, you want to get that wisdom. And, and one of the things that I am going to shamelessly share that I encourage you to go to the Self Ascension Home Study Classroom. Our Self Ascension Home Study Classroom, especially, you know, go to the Ascended Sanity class. It's all of a whopping $22, which is just dramatically underpriced because what we care about is getting the information out there. But it's three full classes, a workbook of material it's not overwhelming, that will really connect the dots. It's kind of like an aha, aha, aha. And then if you feel called, take Ascended Numerology or Cosmic Life Regression or Quantum Clairvoyance and discover that all the momentum, and I'm sharing this for everyone, not just our beautiful listener, uh, Joy, all that you're looking for is within you when you embrace your clarity and you have the structure or the, the wisdom within to kind of, what's the word I want to use here, Shri? Put that clarity in a direction that serves you. Is that Does that make sense to you, Shri? It was Is perfect that, because okay. it's a D. It's a direction. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not only is it direction, but when we line up all of those forces, it becomes a dynamic movement. Oh, 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 you know, do what you spend the break looking up D words. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, it's, it's <laughs> sometimes we just start lining up. You're a dynamo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, forgive us. And so, Shri, I, I, I have to go back and say, okay, I want to read one more of our listener mail letters before we go to step number three. Because remember, we had three simple steps that we are sharing with you today to really claim that clarity. And, and the reason I want to share this is very similar to the email from Joy that we just read. This email uh, is another one that demonstrates what happens when doubt comes in or when we get a message or we get something that, that feels correct. 
And so this is, this is another one that I want to share. Dear Sri and Kira, I've recently been drawn to, and I'm not going to say the name, a certain deck of cards after having a reading. The reading was not predictive, but rather look at the energies that have and are influencing my choices. It was also based on, and it's some elements, and she mentions here, I'm wondering if I should pursue a study of this deck. Is it a density type of tool or is there something to be gained? What perspective is needed here? Thank you and much love, Pat. Well, Pat, I love that you sent this email today. I think it was just so perfect for this show. I really do. This just came in today. And and the reason that Shri and I went through all the emails and pulled this one out is because your email, first and foremost, bring your hand to your heart and breathe. You know, and in a moment, we're going to be reviewing steps one and two and giving out step three on our clarity. But I want you to think about something. Inside of you is all of the wisdom that you need. Inside of you is everything that you need to be clear. And if the results of working with something leave you questioning to the point where you're writing us, then I think you have your answer. And and the reality is, is that the tools that we choose are a reflection of where our trust is at, where our clarity is at. Honestly, I, I can't remember if you ever took quantum clairvoyance or not. However, I would encourage you to go back and revisit it if you did. We also recently um, released the quantum clairvoyance program. It's a, it's a home study program. It's all of $99. Go, go revisit that. And then when you dive into the quantum field, ask this question there. And I think you'll find a greater and richer discovery by gifting yourself with this clearer answer. Although, beloved one, you already have your answer. I know you do. So I don't want to disempower you by saying more than that. Beautiful. Oh, that was a D word. I, I wasn't even going <laughs> to jump on that because we're drowning in D oh, words. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think it's time to go to our steps. I really do because well, we have these amazing three steps that we, really work. We, we do, we do. You know, one of the things I want to remind everybody is that with all of the fun and all of the uh, dancing with D words and, <laughs> and, and everything that we're doing, there is a a serious um, effectiveness, a yes, serious yes. alignment that's being offered here. Because just, just like this person who wrote in saying, I, you know, I'd like some clarity whether to pursue this divination deck. And yet, the, simply asking that question, chances are the response was already bubbling up from inside of her, dismissible her own voice. heart. A- that dismissible voice. Absolutely. And so the quantum field that we teach within quantum clairvoyance is a deep meditative connective state that answers show up, guidance shows up and very you know, clearly. All of these techniques Sri and I really put to use when you show up, you know, I was thinking about Farron, who we talked about, you know, offered her some clarity earlier. You know, come join us in November or December for a personal evolution journey. This is not a long program, but it's a program that's all about you. And, you know, you can be gaining clarity, clarity, clarity. You can be moving forward, getting your abundance. And then when you come for this personal evolution journey, it's kind of like graduate you know, it's kind of like getting your PhD in you and, and having that sense of this is who I am. This is my life's work and a sense of empowered action that is so profound that doubt doesn't even come into play. No, no, no. There is no doubt. All there is is divine guidance and, uh, and trust. Yes, indeed. And so guide me, Sri. We have three beautiful steps. And for those of you that have been listening to the whole show, which I hope you all have been, why don't we review steps one and two just to make sure we're all together before we give you that last wonderful step. We're, we're going to walk through this, and, and you'll see that each step leads to the next and that you're in a truly spiritual alignment that honors the energy of truth. So step one, recognize all wounds are healed through love and accept that your doubt and all else can be healed. Absolutely. All wounds are healed through love. And let's take a deep breath, bringing your hand to your heart. In this moment, I trust myself. Now really feel that, beloved ones. Do it with us. Have your hand on your heart. Take that deep breath. In this moment, I trust myself. And feel that sense of self-acceptance radiating in all directions from your heart through your body. You know, the key to a spiritual practice, 
an energy practice is to give it your attention, to give it your presence, to allow it to bear fruit. And so, all wounds are healed through love. Hand on heart, in this moment, I trust myself. Breathe. And then, leaving the hand on the heart, then declare, Beloved Spirit, show me where I am holding the wound of self-judgment. Ooh, that's a big one, because you, you're allowing yourself that gift of saying, I accept that doubt can be gone, step one, and so in that acceptance, I am available for the universe to show me. And it's important that you say this out loud, that you're claiming your authority as a spiritual being. You know, you are sovereign. And so you hand on heart, you've declared and aligned with your trust. And then step two, beloved spirit, show me where I am holding the wound of self-judgment. And then you allow the free hand to float over your body. And when it it just simply places itself on a body part. And trust that, my angels. That's part of step one, right? We're going to just trust this process. And in that healing circuit, you're breathing love from your heart to that area that was holding the wound of self-judgment. And that brings us to step three. Okay, so here we are. Dun, da, da, da. You want me to do a drum roll, Street? Okay. And you're in that beautiful healing space and you simply declare, I am the healing light of the divine, and I now release and transmute all discord and limitation. So I'm going to repeat that again, because remember, step three is with that hand to the heart. We've just done step number two. So let me repeat that for those of you that are writing this down. And of course, you'll want to listen to the show again and again. I am the healing light of the divine. And I now release and transmute all discord and limitation. Breathe, relax, and allow the truth of that to permeate through you. The key in effectively realigning your consciousness is to slow down a bit and bring all of your presence to the truth that's being declared, to the truth of your intention, knowing that doubts being healed, knowing that your wounds are dissolving, and declaring this from your place of sovereignty. I am the healing light of the divine, and I now release and transmute all discord and limitation, and breathe. Now, the way for this to offer you the maximum gift. Now, this means, beloved ones, that you need to take some passionate action. And this is what we're going to start talking about next week as well. So pay attention here. Is to repeat this. Steps one through three, repeat them each and every day for three weeks. And I know you can do that. Shri knows you can do that. We're excited you are doing it. Three times three. You know, that's a magic, magic thing. Indeed. And you will see marvelous results in your life. You're going to feel the shifts happening. You'll begin to anchor that capacity to listen to the previously dismissible voice, to get used to commanding energy, to get used to being in that alignment with your true joy. And this creates a field of energy around you that we call the attractor field. I love that. Well, you know, and if, you, if you're not sure you know about that, go back and listen to last week's show where we talked about sincerity attracting and frustration repelling. And this week, we're taking our three steps to clarity. I mean, how exciting is that, Shri? It's beautiful. It's beautiful indeed because as we line up with our spiritual essence, it doesn't matter what your job is, where you are, what your clothes you're wearing. When we're lined up with our spiritual essence, <laughs> We're emanating a field of attractiveness that Indeed. allows our life to start reflecting back all of our joy. Well, and here's the deal, Sri. We also begin to notice that everything is a gift, and that's going to bring us to next week where we start our two-part series. So make a note, April 6th, and all these shows are live, so you can call in. But next week is part one of our two-part series, and part one of the series is how to start claiming those gifts, including chaos. I mean, can chaos really be a gift? Well, well, when we're clear, it can. <laughs> so stay tuned, beloved angels, and get clear. Remember, three times three. Do the three steps. 
every day for the next three weeks, and we get the gift of being with you next Sunday right here at BBS Radio. You can catch our rebroadcast here in the archives. You can catch it at ShreenCareRadio.com, iTunes. Join us. And until we have the joy of being with you again, may you trust that all is truly well. Namaste. Thank you for joining us at Shree and Kira Live. To have your questions answered, send us an email to guest at shreeandkiraradio.com and check out more information at shreeandkira.com. See you next week. Namaste.